And the next thing I want to talk about is I want to slowly shift us into a more bigger picture concept. So how about the physical data center network architecture? Within a data center, what do we have? Well, we have rows and rows of racks. And within each rack, as represented in the picture here, we have servers underneath, typically at the bottom of the rack. And then what we have at the top of the rack is called Tor switch or topper rack. That's what Tor stands for, topper rack switch. So we have multiple top of rack switches for high availability purposes, of course, and for dual homing purposes. And then what ends up happening is those top of rack switches ultimately get aggregated and terminated into aggregation switches. And those aggregation switches would ultimately connect to the core of our network, which would connect us to the outside world. This is typically how a data center is configured physically. Now, how about a virtualized data center? So once again, a data center is racks of servers, switches, and, and storage area network or SAN, and you have rows and rows of those racks within a data center. And what you're seeing in this picture here is actually cabinets. These are more advanced than racks. Cabinets have a nice enclosure, they have a door in front, and they provide a form of physical security. And what we have here is a customer who could be a developer or an operator within our network, and they may need to run a certain application. So let's say they came up with an idea of a brand new application, which is gonna revolutionize our business. Well, to run that application, they're gonna need resources. They're gonna need CPU, memory, RAM, they're gonna need server, right? So what they're gonna do is they're gonna create a change request into some sort of a ticketing system. That's how their request typically shows up. So they're gonna log into two most popular systems out there are ServiceNow or Remedy. So they're gonna generate a ticket in one of those systems asking for whatever resources they need. So they say, so they may have a business justification. Hey, I designed this new app called Nodge App. It's gonna be an awesome web app and I need eight core CPUs, I need 16 gigs of RAM and I need 100 gig of storage. That's the request in the ticketing system. Now that request will generate an alert and the data center engineers, and that data center engineering team most likely is gonna be composed of server engineers, network engineers, storage engineers. They're gonna get that request through the ticketing system. They're gonna analyze that request, and then they're gonna go ahead and log into a tool like VMware vCenter and go ahead and through the GUI, configure things, or they may also use an API using a tool like Ansible Chef Puppet for automation to be able to translate that ticketing system request into the resources that that team needs. And ultimately, you're gonna add, move, or delete virtual machines. And once again, virtual machine has a CPU, memory, storage, and network piece attached to it. You're gonna take all those components and get the resources provision, and then ultimately end user gets an email saying their ticket request has been closed and the resources that they have requested to have been successfully provisioned within the data center. Now, this virtualized data center workflow typically could take days up to weeks. It just depends on how well designed your system is and how well designed your teams are. What if you have critical team members that are out on vacation? Well, you may be in a world of hurt things will be really slow. It may take a month or so for that request to be processed. Now in today's world, it's not acceptable. So what that led to is a private cloud architecture, which we also called IaaS or infrastructure as a service type mindset. Here, what we're doing is we're offering our infrastructure as a service to our end customers, which could be developers, application designers, software developers. And we also call that on-prem. You would typically, when you're reading different literature, you're gonna see this terminology constantly come up, on-prem or on-premise. It's typically being referred to a private cloud or private data center type environment. So once again, 
we have a customer or a developer in this case, same request, but here, instead of going to a ticketing system, they go, may go to a web page and they may select, okay, I want to add this VM that basically has eight core CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM and 100 gig of storage. That may be available as a small VM option in the organization. And when they do that, through the magic of API or application programming interface, and I actually did several videos on API, so feel free to browse through my playlists. But ultimately through the magic of APIs, what's gonna end up happening is that request is gonna get translated into the virtualization software through GUI or some sort of an API, most likely through an API. And ultimately what that means is the resources will get provisioned within the data center. Now, what's cool here, as you guys can notice, as compared to the previous workflow, we don't have the data center engineering team in the middle of the workflow. We literally removed that team. And I'm sure the minute I said, we no longer need data center engineers involved in the workflow, that probably drained all the blood out of your face. Before you freak out too much, here's the cool thing. We still need data center engineers. Now it's called a cloud engineering team, but the idea is it's the same team, but their job function is that they're the ones who are making the cloud services catalog available to the programmers, right? So how is it that a developer can go to a web page and then select, you know, small VM, medium VM, large VM, whatever they need to be able to do their job and, you know, deploy apps and whatnot. How do they get that? Well, cloud engineers made that available because remember, this is on-prem. So our team made it available. And then another thing cloud engineers did was they actually configured the virtualization software for it to be able to understand that automated workflow, which is step number two through the API operation. So it's all like behind the scenes, there's no magic, right? Basically the cloud engineering team is the wizard of Oz in this design, if you will. So if you're a data center engineer, your job is not going anywhere. If anything, you're gonna become more and more relevant because now you are part of a strategic IT operation. Instead of just being an expense center, you're now truly a business partner because you're providing a service to the customers, which are employees in this case. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.